guess going with the big picture question to start, 12 signees, just what do you feel like you guys accomplished with this class? Well, like always, you, you, you're you always looking to, you know, fill needs and build for the future. Um, you know, you see three receivers, um, you know, eventually, you know, we continue to, I, I just think, it, first of all, and just generally, it'd be holistically, we'll always recruit for competition and, and keep, keep building there. And um, I think we, if you look at that position, it's it's one that with little different body types and different styles of what we, just like when you see us play, we're using different guys in different positions. Um, I think on the defensive side of the ball, we, you know, again, we, um, we added two athletic, talented guys in the secondary. We continue to evolve to that four-man front as we continue to do that with, with a couple other uh, in the defensive line area. Um, some guys that are kind of are, are, haven't seen, uh, I guess, their best football development. It's going to be interesting. We really like the body types there and what the potential we, we saw in some of those. Uh, Blake Harold would be a guy we, you know, I don't know how much we'll, we'll always talk about, but he's a guy that came to our camp and we played him in a bunch of spots and we really liked his film and really wanted to get him down to camp. He, he quickly made the arrangements and, and it was just somebody that we wanted. And uh, I think he told us in Shenandoah, I was like the first player to get a football scholarship since you probably know or something, but in 80s or 90s or something. So it, it, it's a pretty cool story. Yeah. I'm curious, we talked about local recruiting with you, I think during the season, you've brought up a few times a story about a recruit telling you, hey, I wish I was in the 2024 class mm -hmm. so I could commit. I'm curious, is that Calvin Clements by chance? Uh, no, it wasn't. Oh, really? <laughs> it was not. No. So I'm curious then on the local front, how big is it to have two guys um, like Jaden and yeah, Calvin in this I, class? I, I think we were saying, in fact, I, I had to do another uh, Zoom interview here uh, before I came here. And, same type of story came up is, you know, the, the progress of the program, where we're at, who, you know, and preparing for a bowl and everything we've talked about in this room for most of the fall and especially the exciting beginning is yet in recruiting, um, you know, relationships, decisions, feelings, all that start, you know, a lot earlier. In fact, you know, we had juniors here last week and have had them at games and a lot of those things are already starting. So um, waiting for continued seeing, you know, improvements in that sometimes, you know, that was that was tough. You know, as you hear people say, I see you getting better, but and but yeah, I think with the, the two local guys uh, in Calvin and Jaden, I think being that close probably definitely helped with the the seeing, feeling, seeing a community change, it's in getting more excited about what's happening. And, uh, um, you know, each one in their own right for their own reasons, um, you know, um, wanted to come take another look and have more conversations and uh, could not be more excited. I think it says a lot about them. It says a lot about uh, our program, what the players and coaches have done. and and the impact that I think they'll continue to have in the, in, in the local community and, and really within the state. And hopefully uh, future recruits are gonna take take notice of that and their decisions. Curious with Logan Brantley, that's your first high school linebacker you guys have taken. What stands out about him to you and then what, what drew you to him? Um, obviously it's ability that starts the conversation. Um, you know, comes from an excellent program, you know, won four state championships, so it comes from winning. Um, their staff does a great job there, but um, again, him coming in the summer and committing, and there are a lot of people that try to get, you know, again, we're trying to get him to change his, his mind. Um, what impressed me the most with him, though, was uh, his maturity and how he carries himself. I told him, you know, um, it went from not surprising, I don't want to say disappointing, because you know, guys haven't stepped on campus yet, but you know, he's the type of guy that'll be, be a captain of this football team someday, I believe, just because how he position he plays, the confidence he plays, how he goes about it, and the maturity, and I think he'll, uh, um, you know, he'll, he'll get respect in the room and things like that. So, um, 
Yeah, again, schematically and some things defensively, we, we needed to go older at certain times, but there, there was always, you know, again, as we start to get the numbers balanced out and we continue um, evolving, um, you know, again, it's a, it'll always be a mixture. I think that's going to be the world of college football. Lance, you were talking about Calvin and Jaden. They were both guys who were committed elsewhere before they signed with you. When did you actually feel that they were open? Like, is there a moment you can point to when you felt like they showed they were open to, you know, um, that conversation with you? You know, Calvin, I, I think, was pretty fun. But I, I think holistically there was always a, a small crack in that because um, – and that was just through casual conversation and, and things like that. It, it, again, none of this was heavy pressure. Um, I think it was natural. Um, Kelvin, when we did, when he wanted us to come back and, and come to the home to talk to him and his family, I thought it, it amazing. Both of these guys, I guess, let me, let me back up. I told both of them and their families, it is amazing the transformation of maturity to see from the very first time they sat in my office to the point that they have. And what I just mean is having conversations with adults. And that's hard when you're 16, 17 years old and you're just new at it. And then you go through all these things and how they articulated their feelings of why. And a lot of things could come back to, a, you know, we're talking about, we want to talk about success of the program, but they also talked about their family connections and the impact of there and other things in their lives. And, and, and it resonates and, you know, and, and that's when it's real. And it's not just about the visits and, the, and maybe stadium size or whatever. And, and again, I, I think the improvement of this program, you know, closed some gaps. And all of a sudden they started seeing some of the same things that, that they maybe saw at the other places. And then I, I would like to think and thank our administration, first of all, for their future commitments and making a stance to do that, that they could see some legitimate change. I'd like to thank our fans for filling the stadium and they we creating an environment. We've talked about that. So all of a sudden, some of the things they see when they've, when they've traveled somewhere they were able to experience right in their own backyard. You mentioned future commitments. Andy was talking about his new contract on Monday. Or, yeah, Monday. What is it? What level of priority? Did he buy lunch that day or not? <laughs> <laughs> no. We'll talk about that next time. What level of priority was that for you to make no, sure? It was a huge priority. Um, you know, I, I think a lot, of, a lot of Andy and his talents, and but as a professional, um, what he's what he's added um, to our program, and and um, it was, and, and rightfully so. Um, there was people wanting to talk with him, but the, the, I let me sure I say it correctly. I was going to do that anyway. It was ready in motion, and Andy and I had had conversations twenty four to forty eight hours before he got his first phone call. So this was not anything reactive. It was the continual building and keeping continuity as best we can in this football program um, to move forward. Is this the first time you've had other programs trying to come talk to Andy, or is this something that you've no, in the past? No, Andy had opportunities while we were at Buffalo. No. I wonder, you, you mentioned about the uh, starting to see other things in the, in the building of this program. Um, how, how much of, of that played in this, the, the future of your stadium project and, and NIL and all those things that are now new here and, and new to this? You know, in the past it was recruiting, right? Playing time, here's how you, here's how you fit, yeah. that kind of stuff. But how much of that stuff factored into this round of recruiting? I think a, a lot. I, I, you know, we don't ask about what, now you have something more to talk about. I, I, I think they all, are pieces that you know continually to stack on top. Um, you know, 
NIL is huge. It's, it's a, it depends on the, the individual and, and, of course, where it's at. And, and, you know, we need to continue to get, get better in that. And we are. We're working at it as, as everyone comes. There's, there's points of that, you know, that is, it, it's not something that you, you don't hope comes up in conversation. You can't. You've got to start talking about opportunities and plans and things like that within the rules about what we, we can do. And that, you know, and, and again, the commitment we've made on campus to work with the people that are in the collective in other areas and or in any opportunity is is big. And I think, um, again, something that we will continue to talk about and continue to want to make it better as well. The stadium and resources within, um, you know, this building. And, and that's why, like many of you know, to to get moving and moving quickly um, as fast to impact current current roster and the very near conversations about next year when or or even in February when we're in this room. If there's something to talk about that we're talking about changes in this building that, that's gonna make it better in the day to day life of our student athletes. Did, did they ask about that or is that something about you this bring building? up? Yeah, right. Um, not to me directly, okay. but you know, in, in general conversations and when my biggest meeting is, it's more towards the end. And, and yeah. usually what's, what's great is and that's why I really appreciate and I, I've got to make sure you, you kind of led me into it, thank goodness, is um, to thank our staff and but our recruiting staff and department and interns and everyone that kind of helps through these recruiting weekends that play a part. Why? Because when some, when I ask a question, do you have any questions for me or do you, no, yeah. you know, I think we got them all answered. He goes, in fact, you know, your staff does a really good job. And I think they always talk about that we're always gonna strive for because, and, and naturally is to be transparent and consistent. And it, you know, as I say, we're not trying to, it's not a sales job, okay? This is a, a thing we're here to get a, to get players to pick a place for an education and a great opportunity to play college football at the Power Five level. So with that, when and the nice thing about it is when when you hear a family talk about the genuineness of your staff, and that's where you know that there's not a rehearsed answer, and and it's it's amazing because the, these young men are getting around people a lot sooner, you know. Um, you know, I had a high school coach tell me about it. He goes, you know, he was, he was saying about one of his players and having to be his son. And he said, you know, I let my son go in there now by himself because he's able to, he can filter. And, and, and people can tell what's rehearsed and what's not, what's real, what's not, a lot better than ever before. And a lot of times that helps balance, um, you know, the equation for, for programs like us. Coach, can I ask uh, one other aspect of, uh, of all these uh, developments this year affecting the career process? What about at, with, with uh, coaches or athletic directors or administrators, even if it didn't impact this year, are there maybe doors open now for you or a certain level of enthusiasm for, you know, when you and your coaches show up at a school? Um, the people who know the business, who know who seeing what you've done here, does that maybe help down the road for people that... You mean our availability or, or how we're perceived when we walk yes. into high schools? Yes, at the high school level, when yep. you're out recruiting, when you're Absolutely. dealing with coaches and... Absolutely. Um, we saw it at the end of last year. You know, I, I think I talked about it was, you know, you know, playing well in the state of Texas in back-to-back -back weeks definitely helped us, um, you know, probably in... in, in Thank goodness, I guess, really. And, and not that there was ever any resistance in any way, by, by so because we've been very welcome down there. But, you know, you've got upper Midwest guys that are coming to Kansas to go down to Texas for the most part. And at least as a head coach and not knowing many of the people down there. So uh, all of a sudden it's, what's your body of work? And, and again, this year now uh, in the places that we have been able to go, um, Obviously, college game day and, and being ranked and all those things have um, have benefited this program and and hopefully will will pay 
the future dividends as well as with, in the recruiting problem. As I look down, I see Jamil Croft in Detroit. Mm -hmm. What Chris Simpson's been yeah. able to do there in that pipeline. How important is it like that to get in an area like that? It, it is. You know, it's extremely important and one that I think we can continue to have benefits from. And, you know, it's, you know, Chris does an excellent job there. He's, you know, before joining back with us at Buffalo, he was at Eastern Michigan for one season, but spent, I don't even, I'm, I should know him probably a little bit better if I do my math probably four years at Grand Valley, I think, at Grand Valley State. So he's worked, he's recruited the state. He has good reputation. Again, he's thorough, he's honest, he evaluates well, he's a straight shooter. But also, you know, then Rich Miller coming here, you know, through the portal and, and doing things, it kind of stockpiles a little bit of, of experience. And even the guys that played for us at Buffalo, some have even gone back and helped at some of the high schools and, and things, and, and they, and as they get a little older, they, they see a lot and they talk about their experiences as well. But um, yeah, it's it's important for us to find those those niches. And But the great thing that I have found and probably hit me and it should have probably, you know, hit, resonated earlier when you start right with our starting quarterback is, you know, we're able to go to California and get a couple players. And there's been productive players. We can go anywhere in the country from this locality and be able to to talk about uh, this program, but get there and with reasonable distance, and and allows us to kind of, um, like I said, um, you know, find find our fits. But uh, Jamil's a talented young man. I think he's going to be able to help us in the secondary. Should help us in the return game, and uh, and not only was it Chris, but Jamil coming here, and how excited he was even on his unofficial visit, then to his official visit about the fit. And uh, he was another one that uh, multiple Big Ten teams tried to come in on late and make a run at it. And, and uh, he was, you know, he, he held strong. You, you mentioned back in Buffalo. And I, I just want to know if you could think back to then and then now with the portal in, with all the man hours and things it takes now, just how much different is it? Now with the portal and everything. Oh, it's tough, and and again in those schools, uh, a few guys that I'm friends with yet in the MAC, they talk about it, and they talk about you know whether f people feel they're being poached or or if you know guys just looking for for better opportunities for different reasons. Is that you know that that's a tough level, you know uh, the MAC and even the upper FCS and some things like that. Roster management is is difficult all over the country, but I, I think some of those programs have have some of the toughest jobs, and they're hard. And and you know how far we've come. Of we talk about how fortunate we are to be here at the University of Kansas as a staff. You know, and Andy and Scott Fuchs and Jim and some of us talk about our days driving through, uh, driving from place to place and trying to get there and try to get to as many kids and and even how we were, we're fortunate to get to players and how we can do that with the resources given, we're, we're very fortunate. Do, do you remember the, the first kid you tried to recruit to KU? I know it hasn't been that long, but let, let's not talk about Buffalo guys that you already had a relationship with, but when you get the job and you walk in and- I'm trying to remember, yeah. If you don't, that's fine. I, I, I have a reason for asking. Okay, we'll keep going then. Yeah, so, so what I wanted to ask, it's sort of the flip side of that perception question yeah. was asked. It, it, how you're perceived by the mm -hmm. people you're recruiting is, is changing, it sounds like, and, and building and growing. And, yeah. and I wonder how the flip side of that is. How, how, how does it feel for you to now go out there as opposed to that first kid you recruited as the Kansas head coach? Yeah, I, I guess if you start asking me in that realm, I will, you know, I'm trying to still like think back to already some of those guys in the signing class, but a lot of those were still some of these 23 Calvin sure, and sure, others sure. that uh, that are in the state that that we talked to, and as I mentioned, talking to Jaden and Calvin the first time, and you know, here here you are. By the time they came, it was you know probably the first time was I don't know early June. Okay, we've been here maybe a month. They, they knew a lot more about this, yeah. you know, the city. They knew a lot more about the university and knew a lot more about what's been happening here than than I sure did. But in here we are talking about, uh, you know, direction, really hope 
to be honest, because we haven't even coached the guys we had. But we talked about what, you know, a little bit about things we've been able to accomplish with the plan that we've had. And now, yeah, it's it's a lot easier because you you've been able to. They, they see it and, and and they see some things all coming together at certain times and how um, this place will continue to change maybe even before they step on campus or and and more importantly or equally is when they're when they're here I, I'm sorry I don't want you to compare necessarily but given the level you're at now and, and the way things are going here is, has, is this the quote unquote easiest time you've had? Recruiting guys, or, or is it no, no, no. no. Okay. When was that? Ever? Yeah. I don't know if it's it's a, it's a different type of easy because sure. you know when when you win forty five games in a row, it's kind of easier to talk to guys about why they should come. Yeah, yeah, you Makes know, sense. you know that. But I'd say I go as a Division two assistant coach. We were one in ten. That was pretty hard. Mm. Okay, then three and eight, and then you go ten and two, and then then all of a sudden it's okay. It, it, yeah, and but much like it, and same at Buffalo was as well. Even even though the things weren't completed, projects and other things were aligning at the same time. So you're seeing on field improvement. You're seeing improvement here. There's complete investment, and that's where things can 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 have a chance to stay. Um, you know, in, in those regards. So that's right. I I don't think if, if you ever think recruiting is easy, and I don't mean to, like, no, 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 no. It, it's just different, and and, and it's always going to be competitive, and you always have to find the right fits. It's not always the most talented. You know, we have to have and find. I feel confident about who signed here today because they wanted to be, and they fit us the best. You can be one of the top teams in the country, you can name the ones that have played for national championships, there's still a difficulty in selection of fit and abilities and deciding A over B and all those things. I just think it's different. I think what you're alluding to is the ones that you think really fit is convincing them to, right. to take the leap. And, um, you know, uh, again, I, we tell people, you know, it's, you're going to be able to do something special here. You're going to do things that haven't been done here in a long time. It's going to take a special guy that wants to do it. If you elect to go to a place that that's had it kind of paid for you and you like smooth roads, you know, that's you can do that. But at the same time, you want to be part of something that that you're going to be able to talk about when you're closer to my age and be darn proud of. Those are the guys we want. I want to build up John's question a little bit with the transfer portal doing the national signing day in home visits visits on campus is this december calendar in its current iteration is this sustainable for college football for college football it is it may not be for coaches you know, there's only so many hours in the day and there's only so many places you can be but it's there's always going to be somebody that's going to do it now who and when and how long it's, it, you know, that's that. I've been in meetings since, you know, I've been I was put on some committees or whatever, or you go to a Division One coaches meeting at the AFCA convention and we're talking about the calendar and assistant coach burnout and whatever it may be and expectations of everything. But you're right, the, the, and and it's it's a very hard um, issue. I won't say problem to solve because. Portal windows based on finding a home and getting enrolled and doing those things versus a high school versus a bowl schedule versus, you know, all of that. And you're trying to put it all in. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I mean, it, it's for, like I said, we, we've been given the resources to, to be able, but yeah, I've, two consecutive weeks I was in a lot of states in a very short period of time but, you know there's what four years ago though I you know I've also we've had to do it where we did a signing day in in the Bahamas and get ready to play a game but you're still trying to to get 
to get signees and time in and making sure that the internet works in, 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 in a hotel and, you know, and got, and people were do, are doing it probably today somewhere, you know, and, but, um, yeah, it's, I tell you what though, I, I'm, I'm in, though, wherever I'm at on the, on the energy meter right now, um, it was, this is a lot more fun than last December. I'm, I'm curious with quarterback, do you view that as a, as a need going forward in the late signing period at the high school front? Um, we'll evaluate that. You know, there's a, we've got a lot of, a lot of ways to look at that. And, um, so not, not really in a hurry to, to go one way or the other, or honestly answer that because of, of those options. I, I, I like, I like the options available. On that front, has Jason Bean made a decision on if he's going to use that super senior season yet? You know, as I, you know, Jason went through senior day and and is trending towards moving on and um, and giving a shot. So, um, but um, love to have Jason back and, uh, and and we've had conversations, but at that point, he's he's kind of heading in that direction now, but. Um, um. And then one more for me on the transfer front, I know you can't talk about specifics, but holistically, how do you feel like you guys have, have started this transfer window recruiting wise? Um, fast and few, I mean, the new way it was done. Um, you know, again, I really take credit to, uh, you know, the guys in the recruiting office and Grant Murray, Billy Benoit, Scott Oligo, Greg Schwarzkopf, Rob Ionello, of course, is our general manager. It starts a lot there, just of, of, you know, when, what is it, 700 guys hit it in 48 hours or whatever it was to get eyes on people, to get initial screenings and then get it to people. It, it's, it was, it's crazy. And, you know, then you have coaches in all time zones and, and then they're looking and to, to say that you're, your phone is going off all the time um, is really something I'm uh, yeah I'm really excited about some of the things that have transpired here of late um, again excited for that to show in January when we can talk more about it and uh, yet um, and, it, and of course um, you know our goal is that we we continue to maintain our current roster and and with that so all right thanks everyone we didn't even talk about the game <laughs> yeah. 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 do i have another one yeah. oh, we have another one for you yeah you got two more times before the game whoa 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 yeah. two more <laughs> 27. all right did somebody want to ask something did somebody have i was just are we on a time crunch or uh, i mean you're late for something but it, I mean, whatever Okay, we'll take two more. Real tough on the game, guys. Yeah, yeah, the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm ready. That was better for the 25th. Go. Uh, you mentioned re-recruiting your roster. How much have you had to deal with that? I think we're in a really good spot with that and understanding, and I'm proud of the way our guys have, you know see see where we're at, where it's going. So, um, different conversations at different times. Um, you know, I don't want to make a statement that because it's an ongoing thing all the time. That's what that, that's the other part that's changing is that you never assume anything and uh, never want to be blindsided. But you, you keep going because I like this football team. They're a good group to be around and they're younger players that, you know, I hope that we continue to stay and grow together because our best football is still ahead of us. As far as the game goes, we just finished yesterday of, uh, you know, as we continue to prep is what we're really looking at is, um, as we kind of came off the road or in the last weekend was kind of breaking it into like two, you know, four week, two, four practice segments like we do during the, during the season. So we kind of went with a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday kind of format. Um, and then we will start that again tomorrow 
and now and now, so, and now it's the ones that we really kind of hone in on it and uh you know we've been introducing you know arkansas you know game plan through that but I, i'll say this about practice is that it's been really enlightening it's been everything that i was hoping for as far as player development in certain areas that's been exciting watching some people uh you know get the reps uh, get back on the field do some things so we're excited about that and um i didn't mean to tease anyone too far about getting deep into what we're doing but uh you know we're we're we're, we're getting there and getting excited so okay all right sorry, sorry thanks, thanks. all right Bye.